Welcome to Whitefields Community Church Sermon Extra. This is our weekly video in which we take the text that we studied on Sunday morning and go a little bit deeper and answer maybe some pressing questions that perhaps didn't fit into the sermon or that we uh, want to go a little deeper on. So currently we're in a series at Whitefields called Upside Down, which is our study through Paul's letters to the uh, the Thessalonians, his first and second letters to the Thessalonians. And this past Sunday, Pastor Mike shared with us from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. And Mike, a big thing that you hit on was in verses 3 and 4 of this chapter, where Paul talks about sexual immorality. And he goes so far to say that it is the will of God that you avoid sexual immorality. Um, maybe just share with us, uh, you, sh- you shared some statistics, which were quite uh, surprising, maybe disturbing on Sunday about sexual immorality, specifically pornography and things like that. Uh, maybe share with us on, on this uh, a little bit, uh, some more thoughts, but maybe on the question of why do you think God even cares what, what people do with their bodies in the privacy of their own homes or between consenting adults? Yeah, I mean, it was obviously this is a major theme of for this particular chapter. And as I showed on the statistics, and they were quite troubling, I mean, first of all, just the, you know, 11-year-olds are, are at the age that they're seeing porn for the first time. And, and I wondered where I was at 11 years old, and I didn't even know what a girl was at. 11 years old. And so it's it's quite quite troubling from that perspective. And then also one of the last one was like over 50% of pastors feel like this is a major yeah. a major issue and is having a major impact on their church. And uh, you know, and it's I think it's no wonder that that Satan has used this particular topic to really bring destruction uh, to the church. And I think it's important because 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 of that, the fact that it, it wreaks so much destruction in marriages, in relationships, in 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 our friendships, and all those kind of things, which are one is very important to God, and and um, and it it keeps us away from Him. You know, the shame that comes along with pornography, the shame that comes along with being involved in a sexual, uh, sexually immoral relationship with somebody. It, the end result is it keeps us away from the very person that we should be in relationship with. And, and that cycle, you know, as we, we talked about that, the, the vicious cycle of, of, of being involved in that and then feeling shame and then not going to the very one who, who can help us mm-hmm. and who can take uh, bring us out of that and cleanse our hearts and cleanse our minds. And, you know, and we, we lose. And our, then our, our, our picture of who God is becomes distorted. He becomes that man who's angry, that, that person that's angry with us or doesn't think that, you know, you know, we, we're caught up on all of this stuff and, and, and our hearts get get hard and bitter towards the very one, you know, that, that can save us. And so it has, you know, it has huge implications as far as it's not a victimless crime either, you know, pornography. Oh, yes, I'm doing it in the in the privacy of my own home, but but it it affects you know your relationship with your wife. You know your your wife is no longer that person that's on that screen. They're they they're not as exciting. They're not whatever it might be. It affects you know adultery, divorce. These things have huge ramifications in our relationship with our kids. How they affect our kids in the future. I mean, it's just the the you know it's no wonder that he says this is the will of God and this and this being one of his very first letters. It it would continue in all of his letters. He'd warn the Ephesians. Of course, you know. If, Corinthians, the ch- church in Corinth, Corinth was just screwed up with this particular topic. Like Christians you know? gone wild. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. it was really bad. <laughs> it was really bad where they were glorifying, you know, the worst kinds of things and actually taking pride that they had grace right, for yeah. a guy who was sleeping with his father's wife and and then you know and then you know Second Corinthians they would net not then restore him. You know right. it's like. It was like they were super confused of this topic. It was creating massive confusion for God's character, for our relationship with the people. Yeah, it has it has huge implications for us, and 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 God does really care about it. Yeah. it seems like some of our society, even uh, the global society, is is almost confused about. Like we have conflicting beliefs about it. Uh, I mean, and when I say we, I mean the kind of global society, right? Because on the one hand, there's this big push that like. Hey, what you do with your body is totally your prerogative, and nobody should be able to tell you what not to do. But on the other side, you have um, you have governments, you have companies, 
like Apple, for example, who has made a statement they will not allow any kind of pornographic material on any apps or anything that they sponsor, um, saying, hey, no, this is a real problem. Like, it, it's, it's a gateway into further crimes even. Uh, it is something which is a detriment to society. And it almost seems like there are these conflicting things where it's like our society, you know, has this, this idea that we shouldn't ever tell people not to do certain things, but yet... Um, we realize that that's actually not even a good policy in itself. And as you're saying, right, this is a societal issue. This is a physical issue, but perhaps most importantly, it's a spiritual issue. Definitely, it definitely is spiritual. And I think that's the thing. It kills people inside. It really just hardens your heart and it keeps you away from God. And there, there's a way in which, don't you think that is a fundamental misunderstanding of the gospel but like you said it's a it's a trap from satan Let me totally think about the garden of eden right and the, what do they do they hide from god and yet as you said he is the one who cleanses us so it's almost like this lie that you have to cleanse yourself first before you can come to god when in a way that is not even possible what we have to do is come with our uncleanness to a loving God who cleanses us. And totally, and we have this distorted picture many times that he, he just doesn't love us, you know, and that's what happens in our hearts. But we need to, we lose that father heart of God, that understanding of who who he is and our distort, you know, our, our the world has, Satan has distorted that view and, it, you know, in many ways for the world as well of who God truly is and how much he really loves. It's not, a, you know, not a list of do's and don'ts, you know, he doesn't, oh, I don't want anybody having sex, you know. Right. He gave it to us. He gave it to us. I mean, it's a beauty thing within the marriage covenant, and he has given it to us. And within the confines that he has given to us, it's a beautiful thing. But outside of that, it wreaks havoc. And I think our society tries to mitigate the consequences without actually dealing with the root cause, you know. And, and that's us being submitted to the will of God in this particular era area for the beauty of what he's created to, to be and when we do that we, we're free we're mm. totally free and, I, and then that's kind of the what's lost upon society many it's times like very powerful things tend to be that way right like electricity is very powerful and can be used to do wonderful things but outside of its mm. certain parameters it can also be destructive and totally. deadly or yeah. nuclear power right like it can do wonderful things but it can also cause horrible destruction of course so. yeah totally totally okay so there's another thing here in verse four after church yesterday you were telling me that there's some discrepancy in interpretations on verse four which says this i'll just read it it says that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor but then i have a footnote that says that uh, where it says his own body that can be translated or how to take a wife for himself, because in Greek, the original text literally says how to possess his own vessel. And you started to explain it, but my eyes glossed over and please explain. Well, this kind of made maybe more of a theological thing, but I think it was uh, foundational to the text. And I did wrestle with it as I was preparing for the sermon. And, and I've learned in the past that it's important to wrestle with these particular texts because I've been caught out where, uh, you know, I was teaching from Philippians chapter 2 where it says Jesus made himself of no reputation in the New King James Version. And I, you know, my whole sermon predicated on that word, reputation. Uh, and then I turned to my Hungarian translator and we were talking about it, the text and I realized the Hungarian translation says he was emptied. He emptied himself, which the ESV uses the word emptied himself. And so since that particular time, I've become kind of an all translation person when I study, you know, looking at various things to get the full, you know, weight of what it's saying. And and in this particular case, I thought it was it was important to understand what the text was saying, you know, when it says to take for himself a wife or to control your own body or to control your own vessel. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I did finally, I think I did start to kind of come down on the side of vessel, mainly because throughout scripture that, that phrase vessel is used uh, quite a bit to refer to us as, as people. And, and, and the end result, of course, is, is that it still remains the same, that God's given us sex within the marriage covenant as given to us, in, in, you know, in, 
uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. But also, I think 2 Timothy also really helped me with that one in 2 Timothy 2, 2 22, where he says, Now in a great house there are only vessels of there, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honorable use, some for dishonorable. So if anyone cleanses himself from from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel of honorable use. And then he goes on in verse 22, So flee useful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace. And then also in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Paul talks about the fact that when we when we sin in sexual immorality, we're sinning, sinning against our own body. And just those kind of phrases together help, you know, I came down on the side of, of you know, the, the, the proper usage, maybe a proper word is to control our own vessels in honor and holiness. You know, but, you know, there are, Many th- scholars fall on either side. John Stott, of course, falls on the side of, of the, you know, take for yourself a wife. Augustine fell on that side as well. So, But I think, as I said, the end result being still the, the main point of the text. And I, I really didn't. I kind of glossed over it a bit in the study because there's kind of one nail to hit in this particular passage. And the time constraints, so I just kind of hit that nail, which was, you know, th- to abstain from sexual immorality and kind of all that was around that particular topic. But it was a good theological exercise for the mind, and to, I enjoyed reading into it. So Yeah, great. Hey, well, maybe you have an opinion on that or anything else we've talked about. Leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you and interact with you. Also, if you haven't yet done so, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can uh, click the bell over there on our channel, and that will give you a notification every time we upload new content. Also, Uh, We podcast these episodes, so if you are a podcast listener, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, and Google Play Podcast Store. So definitely subscribe to us on there so you can get our weekly content as well as our sermons on the podcast. And please connect with us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We'd love to uh, interact with you and uh, help you connect with more good content. So please share this with others if it's been helpful. God bless you. 